That's his nose hair trimmer. He makes films with that nose hair trimmer. Ridiculous, isn't it? Right, so we're heading to Brady's Beach. That's Banfield, we just left Banfield. And we, we had our very handsome captain come and pick us up on the taxi boat. And we're heading off to the other side of the bay to get to Brady's Beach. And uh, who's this gorgeous little chap? Biff. Biff? Are you Biff? <laughs> Biff is our mascot. Oh, your breath. Oh, oh that smells like clams. Gorgeous though, aren't you, hey Biff? That is the, the fastest ferry I've ever taken. Once we'd reached the other side of the sound, the ferryman was kind enough to let us both have a go on this floatsicle, which appears to have a snow shovel as a steering mechanism. I wonder if you go backwards. Oh, you can. Brilliant. Wait up, Gavin! Wait up! Wait! Now, at this early stage in our photography adventure, I'd like to bring to your attention the fact that Uncle Grumpy doesn't seem to have remembered to bring any water to our camping trip to Brady's Beach, and that is going to cost him royal. Brady's Beach is about a two and a half hour drive from Parksville and it's on the west coast of Vancouver Island and for a relatively remote location it's actually got the loveliest wilderness toilet I've ever seen which includes ticketry, hand sanitizer, travel brochures and even nicely scented wood chips to pour over your deposit to mask the fragrance. Well that was a fun journey, we finally made it to Brady's Beach, wasn't that difficult and I am absolutely in love with this place. I've never been before, this is totally new to me, even though I've been on Vancouver Island for 12 years now, but look at these sea stacks, this is what I'm after. I love sea stacks and my hope, my wish for tonight, my kind of goal if you will, is that the Milky Way pops up over there and passes behind these sea stacks and it is a blue sky day, not a single cloud, a few little patches but really nothing that would get in the way of the galactic core. However, Uncle Grumpy is pretty sour about it because he's not really into Milky Way photography and he wants clouds, he doesn't like blue skies and bright sunshine uh, and I would prefer a few clouds so that I can get a little bit of colour for that sunset but if I get my Milky Way shot I'll be very very happy. Quite what he's going to do I don't know. It's always really exciting to get to a spectacular new shooting location, especially when it's not that far from home. We were both like giddy school kids, let loose on a new playground, hunting for compositions. Now I'm sure that you guys watch these vlogs and think, oh he's so lucky to live on Vancouver Island, and you're right, but it took a lot of hard work and effort to make it here to the island, and I never take it for granted. But I've done a quick little hike around the shoreline and there are endless foreground objects that I can put in the frame and create curves and leading lines. We've got tide pools for reflections, all of that lovely green algae. It's absolutely tremendous. The only thing is I can't get too attached to any of these beautiful foreground objects that I'm seeing right now because the tide has gone out and I reckon by the time the sun gets low enough that we get nice light it will probably come back in so I know that things are going to change but that's not going to stop me from wandering around and finding compositions that if the conditions are right when the tide comes back I am totally going to get those shots. Yeah I've just spotted I know I said I wouldn't try and get too attached to any particular composition because everything could change with the tide but if it doesn't I'm really hoping that this massive tide pool which is full of creatures all kinds of interesting creatures and beautifully reflects this sea stack, I'm really hoping that this is still intact tonight, either for sunset or for Milky Way. The only downside with the Milky Way at this time of year is it's like, I think three o'clock in the morning, maybe 3.30 in the morning. So uh, I might have to get my sleep in early and then wake up and come back out. Or I might just be so excited that I can't sleep and I just stay up all the way through the night. But either way, it's totally worth it if I can get that shot. What do you think? I'm really feeling it, man. Is it a spiritual experience for I'm you? I'm really feeling it. <laughs> it's pretty brilliant, isn't it? Wow. I can't believe we've never been here after all these years. This is British Columbia's only sea stack, I think. I don't know if you can see on the video, but there's a, there's a bald eagle just on that tree, right at the top there. Right. He's looking at us, he's, right. he's looking at you. We think it's a bald eagle, it might be a pterodactyl. That's how huge it is. <laughs> what do you think, set up camp? Yes, set up camp. 
How do you feel about this absence of clouds? Uh, it sucks. You're a bit sour about it. I am a little bit. But we've got Milky Way. All right. Shall I get you up at 3 a.m.? Yeah, all right. Yeah? What, what will you say when I wake you up at 3 and say, come on, Adam, it's time to go film the stars. Okay, f <laughs> <laughs> so are we, uh, are we sharing a tent? No. No? Definitely not. You have your own tent, your own space. I have my own space. I need my own space. Because we're artists. <laughs> So, uh, what are you hoping to photograph uh, today? Well, seeing as we don't have any clouds, so yeah. we probably won't get a sunset, I'm hoping that these beautifully clear skies and this new moon that we've got are going to give me an epic Milky Way shot as the galactic paw passes over those sea stacks. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Hey, there's a guy on YouTube that I follow, Alan Wallace. He is absolutely incredible. Incre incredible? Yeah. You should see the gear, he's way more successful than you. You should see the gear that he has. 24 millimeter. Alan Wallace! He's amazing! He's bloody Welsh! Oh, watch it man! That's racialism! That's not racialization -ist. I'm offended! Well, I'm offended that you're offended! Well, I'm outraged that you're offended! Well, I'm outraged that you're offended and you're outraged! Well, I'll, I'll f then! Now, just for the record, I apologise in advance, I've got nothing against the Welsh. I just couldn't think of anything else to say about Alan Wallace. He's that good. Um, have you got another tent? Uh, no. I thought you were bringing two tents. No, I told you to bring your own tent. This is just one, a one-man tent for myself. Oh, God, what? Well, I mean, I bet we can both fit in there, though, eh? Uh, I don't think so. I can't just sleep on the sand with the sand fleas. Well, you're going to have to because you're not sharing with me. Oh, I see how it is. All right, well, enjoy your five-star accommodations. Yeah, I will. Bye-bye. Hey, Gavin. Uh, Listen, mate, I've had a, I've had a change of heart. Hmm? I... Uh, I think I can squeeze you in my tent. Oh really? Yeah, I think I think I was, you know, overreacting. I, oh. I really think you you could we could fit in there quite comfortably. Yeah. Oh, you were a bit hasty, were you? Well, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing to do with uh, the fact that you've run out of water, is it? Well, no. I mean, I noticed you got quite a bit there, but yeah. no, it has nothing to do with the nothing water. Nothing to do with that. Nothing, nothing. Oh. No. Well, I, I don't know. You you hurt my feelings with that Alan Wallace comment. Ah, oh, that was bullshit, man. I was just I was just joking with you. Yeah. You're, you're a way better photographer than Alan Wallace. I mean, you. Your, your star photography is some of the best I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. The best you've ever seen? Yeah. So then maybe I could be a, you know, landscape photographer of the year one day. Yes, yes, I think I think you could, especially yeah. if you, you know, shared your water with me. Yeah. Well, alright. I'll share my water with you and I'll I'll get in the tent, but uh you're not borrowing my shit tickets. Oh come on! Well, I'm pretty sure that Adam won't be quite so sour right now because look at this, we've got some clouds and it's about 20, 25 minutes away from sunset. So his face will definitely be at least 35% less sour. But yeah, I'm really hopeful that I'm gonna get some good light. There is all that foreground that I found earlier, I was worried that I might lose it. It's all still here. So I've got reflections, I've got leading lines, tide pools. It's absolutely stunning. So now it's just the game of finding the comp that shows the light in the best way. I may actually have to get on the other side of those sea stacks and shoot this way because there'll be some nice side light on the stacks themselves. It just depends on what, what's going on in the sky and what the clouds are doing. Well, it may not have been the spectacular sunset that we'd hoped for, but let's be honest, they rarely are. Now, in spite of the mediocre light, I did manage to bag this first shot of the day, and while it's hardly portfolio worthy, I am pleased with the composition, and at least now I know that this beach has some serious potential for top class landscape photography. With the sunset rapidly fading into blue hour, I figured I'd head back to the other side of that sea stack and try and capture a shot of that fascinating tide pool. With this shot, I could have easily done a sky replacement and pasted in some over-the-top clouds, but I figured I'd just show you guys the real deal. Now, even though I am a self-confessed light snob, I would always encourage you to go out and find good compositions. Even if you think there's no chance of good light, you might not bag an award-winning shot every time, but at least you'll know exactly where to be when the good light comes. 
reckon I got a couple of quite juicilicious shots there. The light wasn't as good as we'd hoped, the clouds were a bit weak and most of the cloud was on the horizon there so you didn't get that beautiful side light didn't last for very long. We got a little bit of it, but I was quite happy with a couple of shots that I got there and playing with those reflections that you can see in the sand. Uh, that's, always a, that's always a bonus when you get a sea stack reflected in the sand that's just getting constantly soaked by that tide. So I'm quite happy with what we got. Not absolutely killer, but I think better than filler. So now I'm just waiting for the Milky Way. So it's now, what time is it now? It's 20 past 8, uh, blue hour I would say is over now, so we're going to go back to the tent, I'm going to have a bit of a nap, get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and really try and get that Milky Way shot that I talked about earlier. So after all of that drama from earlier on, it turns out that I did actually bring a tent, so in the end we both got to enjoy 5 star accommodations. Hey Gavin! What? Gavin! What? I've really got to go. Go where? I've got to, you know, go to the bathroom. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I don't have any toilet paper. I need some shit tickets. Oh, do you now? Oh, come on. Well, what's it worth to you? I'll give you five bucks. Five dollars? <laughs> it's going to cost you way more than that. Oh, oh, I think it's coming. It's poking its head out. <laughs> well, what do you want? Well, you know that uh, Landscape Photographer of the Year trophy that you got? Well, I haven't got it yet, but yeah. Well, that's mine now. Oh, come on. Yeah, I want it. Oh, you're so greedy. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to stick it on the bonnet of my car and drive around town and lord it all over you. All right, whatever. Just give me your bloody toilet paper. All right, then. Well, you got to come and get it. Oh, God. There you go. Enjoy, don't get any on you. Well, I did get up at 3 a.m. and I poked my head out of the tent and had a look and there was just clouds on the horizon. I thought, ah, oh, forget it, I'll just go back to sleep. And I tried to get back to sleep, but I couldn't. And thank God I couldn't because I looked out again about three more times and the clouds were lifting and the stars were popping and the galactic car finally showed up. So I'm glad I couldn't get back to sleep. I got out, hiked down the beach and started doing my shots while Uncle Grumpy snored in his tent. Sounded like a bear having a fight with a wolf but it was just him snoring. One thing I've been playing with is this night sky filter from uh, Breakthrough Filters and it's supposed to cut down on the amount of light pollution and clean up your astrophotography images. Uh, so this is the actual filter and it's part of their magnetic filter system. So they gave me this holder that you clip onto the front of your lens, you thread it into the, the, the filter thread and then these magnetic filters just clip in and out and you can pull them in and out really fast. So if you've got like an ND or a selection of NDs, you've got this night sky filter, polarizers, they're really quick to pop in and out. So I'll show you the shots that I got, I'll show you a comparison of with the filter and without the filter and you can see what you think, see if you think something like this might be a worthwhile investment but from what I saw on the back of the camera it actually looked pretty good. Here is a test shot with no filter and only very basic Adobe Camera Raw processing. And I copied the exact same processing settings over to this shot with the filter. And at first glance, it appears that the Milky Way has a lot more contrast and clarity, but definitely a very blue cast. And I use zero color noise reduction and the same camera settings for both images. And first impressions of this filter are very good, but it needs further testing. But I have placed a link in the description if you want to learn more about this night sky filter from Breakthrough. So now I'm going to stick around for the next hour or so and wait for the sunrise. His grumpescence should rise pretty soon from his ancient slumber and join me on the beach and hopefully we can get a more epic sunrise than we got a sunset last night because there's some gorgeous clouds on the horizon so I'm quite hopeful we're going to get some good stuff. Well I just woke Uncle Grumpy up and told him to get his ass on the beach for sunrise. It's not too bad, it's not absolutely fantastic, but there is that nice pink stripe of light just behind the sea stacks, which is exactly where I wanted it, and I like how it's reflecting in this gorgeous sand. So I don't think it's going to get any more pyrotechnic than this, but with a few processing tweaks, I should be able to turn it into a fairly decent shot. 
Now, of all of the shots from this little photo trip, this composition was my favourite. Those curvaceously hypnotic sand patterns are so typical of the Pacific Northwest. And it's got all of the ingredients. It's got decent light, but it's got those dramatic sea stacks, reflexions, pearlescent leading lines in the sand. All I needed was a unicorn riding out of a rainbow. Is that too much to ask? Well, that's the sunrise over. It wasn't amazing, but it was all right. I got a couple of decent shots. I've had two hours of sleep, and I do have a face like a petrified sock puppet, not unlike Alan Wallace. And his photography is nowhere near as good as your, you know. There you go. Night shots, you know. But so I reckon that the tale of this story is about perseverance. I woke up at three, looked out of my tent, conditions were crap, I was cold, I was damp, I was tired, and I really could not be bothered with it. But I got up anyway, I went out and I got my shot. And that's the thing when you're a landscape photographer, there's so many times where you just can't be bothered, you don't want to hike up that hill, or you don't want to pitch that tent. If you do do it though, if you put in the effort, you will get the shot, and I'm so glad I did, and I'm so glad you stayed in your pit. <sighs> You missed out, man. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really into uh, night photography. It's not my. It's not my shtick. No. Well, I got a sunset. I got some astro, and I got a sunrise. What more could you ask for? Well, I could ask for some coffee. Good idea. Did you bring any? No. So maybe like I could be landscape photographer of the year. Yeah. Well, you're certainly up there with uh, people like me. You know. And, well, uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'll stay there. Stay in, stay in situ. Oh really? Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy your five-star accommodations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, knew, I knew you'd lose it at that last bit. Alan Wallace. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's Welsh. Hey man, watch what you're saying. That's racialism. That's not racialization. It sure is. But <laughs> <laughs> Gavin. What? I'm really going to take a dumper. What's a dumper? <laughs> oh man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just sit? No, I'm just rubbing my... Oh. That is going to cost you royal. Oh, come on, man. Oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll give them to you, but you've got to pay the price. Oh, 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 I think it's coming. <laughs> well, that's not giving me an incentive. <laughs> Let's go from, uh, well, what do you want? What do you want then? Well, you know that uh, Landscape Photographer of the Year trophy that you got? Well, I haven't got it yet, but what about it? Well, that's mine now. Oh, come on. Yeah, I want it. Oh, you're so greedy. Oh, really? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I'm going to put it on the bonnet of my car and <laughs> drive around town with it. <laughs>